about a year ago, I sentimentally posted on this site telling people that if you have been cheated on like I was, it primarily was fixable through self-reflection and being a better person. That was a bad advice. Your spouse needs to own up to what they did and make it right. You did not deserve it. My wife didn't make it right. She put no effort in making it right. I left her a week ago. Every day that goes by, I feel better about my decision. I am sorry for those of you who are still battling with this. But trust me, if your kids know that you love them, then they deserve your love and cherished and respected. I have set an example to my children and they see I stood up to someone who treated me so poorly and I'm feeling great about 2021. 2020 required me to make a lot of hard decisions, but after committing to those decisions, I feel a weight off my shoulders. I hope you listen to yourself, trust yourself again, and make the decision that is right. You do not deserve to live in a toxic relationship, not another day. I married my wife in 2004. After a very fast courtship, I was heading off to seminary and she wanted to join me. Even when I said we could wait another year, she said no need. I felt blessed. This actually was a red flag I had not seen. A narcissist would come in fast and hot to hook you in before you figure them out. The years went on and we struggled through the marriage. She seemed to fly off the handle on little things for no reason. I walked on eggshells to make the marriage peaceful. Red flag. Narcissists begin to devalue you to ensure they are the ones in power. We had three children together. I love them dearly and spent 90% of the quality time with them. I also worked and then couldn't keep up with the spending, so I worked three to two consulting jobs. Why my wife rarely works. And when she did, it was a $15 an hour pipe job. Red flag. After they begin to devalue you, narcissists begin to leech off on you all the time. I thought this was what marriage was. I just wanted to make her happy. I told her I was feeling worn out and felt like no one cared about me and I was just being used up. She said, you need to be more like Christ. Sacrifice and stop thinking about yourself. Red flag. Narcissists who are spiritual would twist your fate to devalue you and justify their own behavior. In 2018 to 2019, we only had XX once after I pleaded. I wondered what was wrong with her. At a party with my family, as my children stood next to us, I noticed my wife was smiling as she was texting somebody. I was kind of curious and took a glance at her phone and I saw something about cuddling. Later that night, I asked her about it. I did not know at the time, but she lied to me, stating it was just some lonely only boyfriend she can't get rid of. I suspected that she was lying about it, so while she was sleeping, I unlocked her phone since I knew her password. Come to find out, the text messages had been deleted. The next day, I did some research on how to recover deleted messages. I was able to buy a third-party software. While she was asleep, I downloaded it and recovered some of the text messages. I discovered that they had been keeping in touch and meeting up on several occasions. I saw evidence that she sent him my address and they met up at my house on several occasions while I was at work or on business trips. I was heartbroken, especially since some of these meetings were done while my children were home. And during this period, she kept refusing intimacy with me. I took all the blame on my shoulders. I thought I failed her as a husband. About a year ago, I sentimentally posted on this site, telling people that if you have been cheated on like I was, it primarily was fixable through self-reflection and being a better person. I stated how people need to look at the mirror and fix their marriages. That was a really bad advice. Your spouse need to own up to what they did and make it right. You do not deserve it. My wife didn't make it right. She put no effort in making it right. I left her a week ago. Every day that goes by, I feel better about my decision. I'm sorry for those of you who are still battling with this, but trust me, if your kid know that you love them, then they deserve your love and cherish and respect it. I have set an example for my children and they see I stood up to someone who treated me poorly. I'm feeling great about 2021. 2020 requires me to make a lot of hard decisions, but after committing to those decisions, I feel a weight is off my shoulders. I hope you listen to yourself, trust yourself again, 
and make the decision that is right. You do not deserve to live in a toxic relationship, not another day. I tried that for two months, only to find out my wife continued to text him, call him, even after I started marriage Bible devotions with her, and so much more. I was so confused. I didn't know who my wife was. A lawyer told me about narcissism. And then, once I learned about covert narcissism, I knew what I was dealing with. Gaslighting. My wife telling me I was confused when I asked legitimate question. Triangulation. My wife using another man to gain power over me. Flying monkeys. My wife telling her friends how she suffered in the marriage and how I am a bad husband. I couldn't sleep. I started losing work. I have self-deletion thoughts because I was so confused and tired and betrayed. Every day was like waking up in a bad dream. She told me at one point, I have been miserable for 15 years and I should have left you a long time ago. She said that this guy was a good guy. These are the things she actually said. Who is this person? I realized I have been projecting my innocence and devotions onto her. She was not innocent nor devoted. She was a snake. Who was using me a pastor opened my eyes and quoted scriptures he said jesus said to be as innocent as a dove yet wise as a serpent you have the innocence part down it's time to wise up and that changed everything for me my wife refused to go to counseling i went to three different counselors over the period of a year the best was one who specialized in abuse victims i was experiencing emotional abuse from a person who would not leave me would tell me everything is going to be okay. Would tell me that I need to look to the future and forget the past. Yet, behind my back, kept deceiving me. I was afraid of her. She tried to isolate me, not letting my family to come into her home. And they are visiting from all across the country. As much as I tried to move forward, my body would not let me. The body keeps the score and I felt physically sick around her. The trauma counselor walked me through the final month, the hovering which a narcissist does to try to suck you back into the relationship and not falling into the trap of the hover when they are all so nice. But it's just an act. And when that nice act doesn't work, they get really mean. I fear about the impact of divorce on my kids. And then I realized that was just an excuse. I had no confidence in myself anymore. My trauma counselor helped me to get my feet under me and get my mojo back. I knew it would not be easy. But I knew the day was coming. And on December 3rd, I told her it's over. I told the kids that night. It was incredibly difficult, but it had to be done. Why? Because raising three kids in a toxic marriage would be more harmful than getting them 50% of the time in a joyous situation. If my kids were in this type of marriage, I would want them to get out of it. I need to set an example. I am healthy, happy, and alive. If I would have stayed in the marriage, I don't think I would have been around for three to four more years because the body does keep scores and a disease or mental breakdown would have come. Finally, we must stand up against those who are acting evil. This cannot stand. I was not going to feed her narcissism, her deceit, her power grab over me. I became an expert on codependency, me, and covert narcissism, her, and see what I need to work out so this never happens to me again. I hope this story helps someone. I never thought I would get divorced. I am ordained and believe in the sanctity of marriage. But when you are married to someone who uses that against you to keep you under their thumb, then that abusive situation cannot stand. No, it is not God pleasing to submit to abuse. So I stand before God. I know that he helped me to escape someone who was scamming me. I can't believe this actually happened, but it did. And I like to think I rose to the occasion. I'm doing great. My kids are too. 2001 is going to be a great year. By the way, someone asked me, did I tell the kids the truth? My kids are 15, 10, and 7. No, I, I did not tell them the truth. I just told them mom and dad aren't going to be married anymore and that we would be better as co-parents than married. I just said, there are certain things I would explain when they get older. There are two reasons for this. The first reason, if I told them the truth, it would deeply trouble them. They likely won't fully understand much of it. But texting another man, sleeping with another man, is just too much for a child to handle. The number two reason, legally, that would come back to bite me. If I talk badly about my wife, if the judge ends up deciding custody, 
that will be used against me. We should not talk poorly of our spouse to our children. The way I see it is that over time, the truth comes out. Over time, her behavior versus my behavior will be crystal clear. Already, the kids prefer to stay with me. I don't want to leave me after I have them for the week. I encourage them to engage with their mom. I don't talk poorly about her. And I think this is one reason why they respect me during this difficult time. My wife is the one who limits contact. They see that and it bothers them. So her actions are already coming back to bite her. I want them to have a good relationship with their mom. It's important. So I try my best to support that while also protecting them from her narcissistic behavior. That would take time and counseling. Regarding no contact, if we didn't have kids, I would not be contacting her or responding to her at all. But we have three children that we share. So I have gone graystone, which is keeping things only to mundane topics. I have minimal answers and stick to facts, no feelings. As a matter of fact, information about logistics only, kids clothing, schedules, and etc. No small talk, no asking her how she's doing, no responding to questions about how I'm doing, no inviting her over unless it required by the separation agreement, still being debated. I have no desire or temptation to connect with her. We have been separated for two weeks. So far, so good. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. Please make sure you like and subscribe. And also, I want to know your thoughts about this story. Go down to the comment section and write your comments. Thank you and have a wonderful day.